You know, Basti, I wonder if Ed calls the other cast as wonderful as well. I have no idea. I hope so. I'm getting yeah. a little bit jealous. Okay, so let's see. I think Batuhan is going to start. And what we know about Blackwing is that the first turn bot revolves around Do Dawn King, a Kali Yuga, the DDD boss monster. Yep, that is a fiend, but we're going to see a lot of Winged Beast before that. And he is going to start off with a very powerful one, and this is Psy Moon. This is one of the, I would say, middle stage release cards yeah. of Blackwing, because they weren't among the original ones, but then they came out in between in the Legendary Duelist season, and that's a really powerful one, because you can just banish it, and then you will activate Black Wild Grind You have to banish deck. a different... Oh, do uh, you have to? An, an other Blackwing monster, and he banished Samoon with Samoon, and oh. then got to activate the Black Whirlwind. <laughs> Fair enough, works though. That certainly works. You just activate the Black Whirlwind, and you immediately then normal summon one after. So he normals the Samoon and gets to search one monster with 1,600 or less attack points, and that's one of the new ones he just instantly it's got there. It's Sudri, and he no, also. No, it's Shamal. I think he searched for Sudri, oh, and he okay. still has Shamal in hand. I think I saw Sudri as well. Let's get Shamal up first, because I think he just revealed this one. You can send this card from your hand of field to the Juan, then plays a Black Feather Whirlwind. Yep, I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. So we do not only have Black Whirlwind now, but we also have Black Feather Whirlwind being activated right there. Yeah. <laughs> and Matthew, of course, has to read up on the new cards. A bunch of support cards, honestly, in Darkwing Blast for the Blackwing archetype. And some pretty, pretty cool one. And actually, back in the day, Nobody really used to play the original Black Winged Dragon. But yeah. this card actually is really a centerpiece of the deck now. Oh, and again. we have Vata, the big brother of Vayu, the symbol of honor, the emblem of honor. Yeah, look at that. Batuhan is just going from yeah. one new card to the other. So all the support cards actually making their way into the deck. All of the support cards were really useful and helpful for the strategy. <laughs> look at how gangster this bird looks. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> also, it actually has exactly the same stats than Vayu, yeah. right? It, it is really an emblem. Is the, it is the actual brother, yeah. It is the actual brother. And this one is really cool because it lets you, on the field, Synchro Summon. Doesn't sound too crazy because you could normally just Synchro Summon with it anyways, but you can use the second material from the deck. So you're just going to use itself, being a level 2 tuner, and something else from the deck. And I think we're going to see Blackwing Dragon right there, right? Yeah, because be Vata case. always uh, Synchro summons into the Blackwing Dragon when using its effect. Oh, and but there's Halfness as a response from Matthew. And what are we milling? Ooh! Keldomodora and Mystic Mind. So this is one card that Batuhan does not want to see at all. But having these two Shufflers is, I think, really, really strong against the deck. Yeah, we see one card that would be useful in the graveyard being Sephiroth. So that's... Definitely unfortunate that Matthew has double shuffle oh, there with Majora and he also Keldo. takes Shinook, the right? Shinook, I think. Yeah. Shinook is going into the graveyard there as well. The Snow Blast. Yes. Another card from Darkwing Blast. And <laughs> look, Matthew now takes them all together, reads them one by one. What do all those little birds do? We don't have time to read each card separately. And now and there it is. is in the Starlight, Starlight Rare, Rare, of course. Black the beautiful Winged Starlight Dragon. Rare beautiful. from Darkwing Blast. It's always a cool thing that there's one spot for Starlight Rare yeah. always being an OG card. We had Ghost Bell, for example, not yeah. very long ago. And now in Darkwing Blast, we have the Black we also had Winged Dragon. Dragon. Oh, yes. Like Rose Dragon, I think. Indeed, we had. So, there is the Black Winged Dragon now on the field. So, uh, why don't we bring it up onto the screen as well? Oh, because yes, people may course. have forgotten what yeah, Black Winged true. Dragon was actually doing. This and card actually is Solo Wins <laughs> versus, uh, um, what's it called? Mystic Mind Burn deck. Yeah, because burning is not really a thing anymore. Am I mistyping this? Maybe you are. Let me bring it up for you. That's how you you, you need this. You need this right Oh, there. very easily. I think yeah. we're getting there. Yes, very is coming. Black winged dragon in its beautiful <laughs> the starlight rare rarity. Even in our in our card highlight, yeah. it isn't starlight. It's the rare. dark wing blast starlight. Perfect. Yep. So. Oh, but he has a base deal on top of it, and that's a huge downside from the Blackwing deck. Of course, they're all dark, so the very yeah. popular base deals are actually working very well against it. Now we're using the Sephiroth to bounce back our Black Feather Whirlwind. Yeah, the Vata was supposed to be special summoned again by the Black Feather Whirlwind. 
and this back feather woven is now me. <laughs> we don't take 400 damage from that Zephyros. We have Blackwing Dragon collecting these counters. There's another activation of the Black Feather one. And as I thought, he searched for the Sudri early on. So that's another free off from Darkwing Blast. That's one of the ultras, actually, of yeah. the set. And he's Norman summoning it here. And yeah, this he one just searches a monster on Norman Summon or a card that mentions Black Wing Dragon. Yeah, as the new support is evolving around yeah. Black Wing Dragon. And he's already on the field. It will be quite easy to find something here. And this looks like Orochi. Isn't that Orochi? Yeah, that's one of the older ones, actually. Blackwing Orochi the Squall. We have a really OG one in the deck as well, by yes. the way. So uh, Busty is saying the older ones, but we might actually see a card from Crimson Crisis apart from Black Whirlwind. Yep. But don't spoil that yet. Oh, there's another old one, though. And I think this trap card is actually really powerful. Blackwing Twin Shadow. He just searched it. And that's a really, really good one because this also this one is from mentioned. Glass. Yeah, yeah. What did yeah. I say? Old one. No, no, just a new yeah. one from. I, I was totally uh, thinking of a new card because it was just released, and that also, of course, mentions Black Wing Dragon, and that's why you could search it with the Sudri, and uh, therefore he now could even activate this from his hand in his yeah. own turn, even as though it is a trap, because if you read it very carefully, you will realize that you can activate it from your hand if you would be. If you do have Synchro Monsters on board of the Blackwing archetype. And now we are going into... Yeah, there's another Synchro Summon happening. And that I looks like... the name. That looks very much like... Um, let me just see... Oh yeah, that's Blackwing Tamer Obsidian Hawk Joey. Which oh. is a card that was also released uh, alongside Simon back in the Legendary Duelist days. But it's also a card that hasn't seen a whole lot of play. And funnily enough, it's a it's a warrior and not a winged beast. That's very untypical for Blackwing cards. I mean, it is not a Blackwing, it is a Blackwing Tamer. True, true, yeah. And it is on the board now. And let's see what he can do after this. He already baited out the Mujora shuffle, so only one more shuffle effect to go through. And he already has a big board, I mean, like... Oh, oh, yes, we are going to see something really cool now because Obsidian Hawk Joe is a warrior. Muddy Mud Dragon might be something that could lead into Red Eyes Dark Dragoon here. That is basically the only fusion monster he's playing in his extra deck, so it would also be the only option he could go into with that Muddy Mud Dragon. I would, I would love to see you. Red Eyes Dark Dragoon because yeah, we haven't seen him in ages. And yes, he uses the Black Wing Dragon and the Muddy Mud Dragon to bring down the right, Red yeah. Ice Darkness Dragoon. He hits the field. A nice and little buffer. Uh, yeah, we're going for the Twin Shadow. Twin Shadow as well. I'm going to get this one up as well. I confused something. I thought you need the Joe for the Fusion Summon, no, but no, you no, actually you need, need a Dragon, dragon Monster. You need a Dragon. You need um, the Red Ice Dragon specifically, or just a Dragon. Yeah, now Matthew is thinking on whether to use the Caldo and he decides to do so. And ooh, there was the there was the Raiders wing yeah. being discarded. Let me check. That. Oh of course he negated with it doesn't it doesn't matter what oh, Raiders yeah, Wing is doing right here because he just <laughs> used it as a discard for the Dragoon and he keeps on going. This is looking strong here from Batuhan. And this looks like Raikiri. Yeah, it does no, for sure. No, oh, it no, could no, be it could no, be no, Borea no, Storm the Wicked yeah. one, right? Yeah, yeah, That's it's Borea Storm the Wicked win for sure. Another one of the support cards from Darkwing Blast, and we're dumping another monster to the graveyard. Which is the Steam the Cloak, a card yes. that has been recently set to limited status on yes. the Forbidden and Limited list. This card was forbidden for a while, and now it's back, uh, mostly due to Christron Hakifibrak's uh, yeah. Joining the Forbidden section, oh, but there's also Kalbeck for Matthew. from the deck, so Kalbeck is going to bounce Borea Storm. Yep, that's what's going to happen. But still, I mean, Batuhan already has Dragoon on board. But on the other hand, Matthew, let's be honest. He has three monsters on board as well, and he's going to get even a Druid Swarm in the end phase. Yep. And you would be like, hmm, there's Red Eyes Dark Dragoon on there, so you could just take care of the monsters. But that effect only is applying when you really 
hard summon it with the Red Eyes Fusion. When you have the normal monsters in Graveyard, and we know there are no normal monsters in his Graveyard right now, and therefore the pop effect actually doesn't come into place here. That is indeed too deep. Oh, what? Wow. He's just getting rid of his Dragoon Fob Steam. I did not see that coming. I did absolutely not see that coming either, got to be honest with you. He, he doesn't value the Dragoon at all. I mean, I do understand it a little bit because there are no cards left in hand for Batuhan, so the negation effect would have been just simply not happening, but still, just having a tower monster with 4,000 attack points doesn't sound too bad, I right? mean, it does not contribute to his goal in the end, which is to summon Kali Yuga. Do you think we can get there still? I mean, he has a level 7 monster on board with his Synchro, and he could now Synchro Summon to another level 7 monster, right? So maybe we're still going to get to Kaliuga, actually. You might be right. It could happen still. But doesn't he have to go over the Rusty Bardash? Yeah. He might actually be oh. locked into the <laughs> Blackwing monsters at some point, because I gotta be honest with you guys, I don't know the Blackwing combos by heart yet. Not yet. Uh, we, we should all learn them after yeah. seeing Batuhan combo off for so long here already. I mean, he's Against already in for interruptions for, already. For, for, for 10 minutes, and he, yeah. he hasn't stopped yet, so he's definitely... This deck is actually fun to watch and has been probably fun to play. Two shuffles, Keldo, Mudora, Magnamut and Kelbeck from hand. Four yeah. interruptions, and he's still going. This is, this is actually really impressive. Absolutely. And I mean, we talked about the downside of Matthew having three monsters on board already, but the upside is that he already used three of his cards in hand. Yeah. So he only, when he draws for turn, has three cards in hand to use. So there's definitely some potential that Batuan might be winning this year. And there's the next big synchro monster coming out. Black Wing full armor master hitting the field. One of the biggest ones. 3,000 attack points, 3,000 defense points. And that is a pretty, 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 pretty cool monster. I mean, look at him. What a cool looking card. He's being summoned in defense position. And it's unaffected by other card effects. Yes, but that doesn't hinder Matthew from resolving the effect of Magnamut, searching for a Druze Worm. And that means we are in end phase. That means this is the end board of Batuhan. Let's see how well it stands versus Matthew here. And also, let's continue reading the full armor master again. Um, oh, each time an opponent's monster activates its effect, you can place one wedge counter on that opponent's monster. And after that effect, yeah, after that effect resolves. And okay, yeah, the other effect that interacts with those counters only works in your turn, so yeah. that's not going to be too helpful here. Just seemed like something you would go into because it cannot get out as easy as the two other monsters on board. But it doesn't really sound like something that would be impossible to out for Matthew here. So I mean from what we have just seen, ah he had Raider's Wing in hand. This is a this is why he can't send it with Rusty Bardage. So maybe this is why he didn't go into that route. That's potentially true. And look at this! We saw a lot of old birds, but now a Cyber Stein is hitting the field. Oh yes. <laughs> another this is another OG card. And of course it works very well in the fusion deck as <laughs> Tielemans and he's just paying 5,000 life points to special summon out in, uh, to special summon out kit colors. I wanted to say a very expensive instant fusion there. <laughs> yeah, this is what kit colors is worth to him. Absolutely. And I mean, there are there are other normal summons in the deck. I mean, of course, Cyberstein is a level 2 monster, so you can always resummon it with Elf at I some think point. that's usually the plan. Yeah. You want to mill it and then bring it back with Elf to have an additional fusion summon. But he, in that case, he hard drew it, so he might as well normal it and get his play going by summoning out the Kid Colors here. And yeah, look at this. Now that there was a level 2 monster on board with Cyberstein, he might as well link it off for the elf we were talking about. And now we go for Kid Colors summoning out the Rhino out from hand and bringing itself to the graveyard. Oh man, he's popping off here. He mulls Scream, he mulls Huffness, Scream, Merly. Merly and Instant Fusion. That is huge. He can actually just bring the third name into the GY now, which would be Shiren. But does he even have the space on the field to, to resolve all these effects? I mean, he would have to use monsters from the field for that. So Kaleido Heart would have to come down at some point with that, that Rhino Heart on board. But yeah, I think he just uses all of his zones here, basically. But I, what I'm thinking is without Pearl Reno, 
does he even get over the full armor master because it's unaffected by other card effects and it is at 3000 so is there an out for matthew does he play a bigger link package it does not look like it let me see you might be right he might be struggling to actually out this here i mean one way could potentially be dark because there are a lot of big dark monsters in the graveyard of batuan and maybe Blackwing Dragon could... How much attack does Blackwing Dragon have? 2,600, okay, if I'm not mistaken. not enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure it's not 3,000, so you, you're probably right. I mean, the 3,000 does not help you at all. <laughs> the, it's 2,800, but oh, still it's not enough. We have plenty of 3k attackers on field already, but uh, full armor master is in defense position, so... Yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly yeah. 3k, so you would need something bigger than 3k. Borea Storm also not being big enough. Yeah, I think there's not really a way for him to get over this right now. So maybe the summon of the full armor master bought Batuhan a turn here because it would not be able to be outed. And oh. it puts wedge counters on all the opponent's monsters. Yeah, he keeps that, on counting. I mean, and there's Dweller now. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Dweller makes sense. He, I guess he could go for Zeus as well. I mean, Dweller or Zeus both would be good options, I think. Reading. I know how it is to play against the deck you have no idea of. Absolutely. Oh, and we are attacking and we colors. don't care about that, right? Oh, that's... May, wait, 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 wait. Let's double read rule colors because there is a battle effect as well. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there's something we are missing right there. Da -da 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 -da. Other Aqua Monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. That was the effect I was thinking of, but I don't know how this is doing something for him here. It was enough to run over the full armor master, though. Well, uh, let's just accept the fact that it happened. I mean, <laughs> we're not going to solve this mystery anytime soon. Matthew takes game one after having so many hand interaction. It was Havnus into milling the two shufflers. It was Magna Mood, and it was a Kalbeck being hard summoned to spin the Borea Storm. Yeah. So that was a lot. Absolutely. Let's just quickly double check. Abyss Dweller does it o does it only boost itself, right? Or does it boost Aqua Monsters in general? I think that could be the case why he summoned that Abyss Dweller right there, right? I'm actually kind of curious. Okay, we do not have it here in card highlight, but whatever. So I think it does actually boost yes, I Aqua think Monsters so in general. And Rukalos is monsters. one. So, or Water Monsters even. Even better. I mean, yeah. it works for Rukalos. And I think that was definitely the reason why it was big enough to run over the full armor master there. And it was Strong. good enough to wipe out the entire life points of Batuhan. We were watching a long, long combo by our Blackwing player here by Batuhan, but yeah. it wasn't met with success. I mean, there were... This was such a good hand of Matthew to open yes. with against this. Kalbeck really showed oh. up in this matchup. For sure. Unfortunately, he had to play versus three interruptions. In the end, even four interruptions because Modora and Caldo were yeah. milled. So definitely an unfortunate scenario for him. Let's see, though, what is Batuhan bringing in to support his going first strategy here. And let me tell you something. There's not really anything. One oh, card, maybe. Yeah. Triple Tactics One card, Talents. I'm pretty sure. Triple Tactic Talents would have showed up in the last match. For there sure. were so many effects activated. I mean, we have discussed this earlier. Players are actually main decking one talent because you <laughs> can always resolve it, but you never really want to have two in your hand. So you should play at least one. Yep, yep, yep. And because you can always resolve it, it's always a good card. So you really want For to have sure. it in going first. I think you want to have it in the main deck all but the time. Looking at Matthew's side deck, there's so many going second cards that I can see coming in here because he already had three interactions on his opponent's turn. He's yeah. going to up that number even now by siding in infinite, infinite and permanent as well, I'm pretty yeah. sure. And then another copy of Mystic Mine will help because that is also pretty good versus Kaliuga. And then one card I'm also looking at, and I think you just looked at it as well, Super Polymerization, is that what yep. you're thinking? Yep, this could actually take out the target for the rank-up spell. Because it's only the yep. main phase, right? Yeah, you can just priority draw phase it anyways. That's if what it I wasn't mean. In the yeah, main yeah, yeah. Phase, exactly, yeah. exactly. But yeah, otherwise, oh yeah, you could you anyways always use the yeah. super poly. You're right. But in this specific case, I think the super polys are going in quite easily. Yeah. So maybe that would be something Batuan has to think about because he could also as well just end on one monster and then use the rank up on that, and then super poly isn't a thing anymore. Fair enough. 
So that could be the game plan. We saw that he was eager to do a whole lot more, though. He was summoning monsters left and right. In the end, didn't have the success he wanted to. Let's see whether he has more success here. Let's go for game number two of this feature match. All right, we're back on. Batuhan will start once again here with his Black Wing strategy. And I want to see them all again. He basically brought the whole gang last game. He, he summoned <laughs> all of them. No, we were missing the Crimson Crisis oh. Black Wing. I want to tell you guys before we don't You're see it. Right. Gale the Whirlwind is a one-off. Apparently, you still needed to outstart a strength. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it. And he's starting it off again with the Sudri. And he's searching out another new one. Let, let's double read on it. Yep, yep. Yeah, we don't need to check out the Tillman's cards. No, no, no. Not give at all. us the Black Wing Spice. Yep, Sudri into Shamal, and Shamal, yeah, Shamal as is in game set. number yeah. one, is going to activate the Black Featherwire round, right? Yeah, yeah. Black and you cannot ash that because it activates directly from the deck into the spell trap zone. You're I don't right, think that right. Matthew wants to ash that because he doesn't play it. And now we are seeing Vata. Yep, another normal summon. And Vata wants to do the same thing it did last time. Just putting one into the graveyard and synchro summoning with it then. You don't even need to use the monsters on board. You can just use stuff from the deck anyways. And look, he sends the Hamatan, he sends the Sephiroth, and that would again make himself a level 8 synchro monster, which should be the beautiful Black Winged Dragon. There we have him once again. Why, why was he able to normal summon twice? I don't necessarily know. <laughs> Maybe it has to do with Black Feather Whirlwind. <laughs> I'm checking the card right now. I really don't know. I mean, that's a pretty good question. Maybe Black Wing Shamal the Sandstorm allows that. Check that one as well. Let me check Vatar as well. Maybe he can. Oh, I think he can special summon it from the hand. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah it just has the OG Blackwing effect. You can special summon it if you control another Blackwing. Easy. And there's Calback again, though. Oh, no. Oh, as you say, no. By performing the Synchro Summon into the Blackwing Dragon, there was oh, one monster going into the graveyard. Huge. And he just wants to bounce the Blackwing Dragon, I'm pretty sure. And that is potentially stopping Batuhan quite heavily again here. Because I think Matthew in Game 1 realized everything is evolving around that Blackwing Dragon. So yeah. if you just instantly get rid of that, that could be a pretty early stopping point for Batuhan. And this is a gigantic problem for the deck. I'm not oh, going to wow Magna Mood Magna on the Black well. Feathered Whirlwind. He has it all again. He just has not revealed a Havnus yet. So maybe it's just Magna Mood and Kelbeck this time. But still bad enough for Batuhan. Yep. Okay, so now we are checking if it actually works with Kelbeck, I think. Can um. you actually use Kelbeck on the Summon of Black? Winged Dragon after Vata sent a monster from the deck to the GY? I mean, I would think so, to be honest. I would think so, too. But it's always good to confirm, so our judges are having a quick read on the card, but looks good to me, and it's crazy. Matthew, running good today, running yeah. good. Opening Kalbeck and Abyssal Magnum with both games, Versus the good old Blackwing strategy, must be good, and must be good. This is a really big problem for the Blackwing strategy right now, because these plays, they are really good. Like, you're milling a card from the deck to Synchro Summon, this is amazing, but it opens up Kelbeck plays. Yep. And also, the, do the deck being completely dark-centered. Yeah. It's not really the best. That's what I like about the Naturia deck. We saw that in yep. action earlier as well. All the Earth cards. Medolce, same deal. It doesn't even interact. It doesn't even give the Bestials a chance to hit your deck. But here we see this deck really being a dark deck and therefore being targeted by one of the most popular engines in the whole tournament. Same goes for Pendulums, by the way. You just, I mean, you open your opponent up to summon Magnamut on your Revolution Dragon, but that does not really hurt you. Yep, you're right. We are now using the effect of Sephiroth's bow. Black Paying Feather a couple Whirlwind. of life points. Getting back to the hand. Let me check the Black Feather Whirlwind again. If you can just activate it and use it again like Black Whirlwind. That would be cool. So, yes. we are tributing the Sephiroth. 
<laughs> he's double reading on the Sudri. I do understand as well. You said it earlier. And you know what I also understand? That you had to bring a pendulum. You just a pendulum hat. And I can only imagine your face tomorrow when we see that somebody's making top cut with pendulum. Oh, I would love that. Yes. Immediate feature match. <laughs> <laughs> not even a question. Not even a question. Nobody can discuss this with me. Yeah, but we I talked about I have the power to do that, but <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it a little bit in our um, quiz or like our Ask Cast interview. There are still quite a few pendulum oh, decks yeah, being are. very well in the tournament, being very well in competition. So Oh, this is Nothang. Oh, no fun coming down. Which actually is now burning the opponent, right? Because we yep. only saw life points lowering his own uh, effects, lowering his own life points. But now Notung is going to burn the opponent. Actually, No Fung with Starlight. And now you can actually activate the Black Feathered Whirlwind, and Nothung opens you up to have another Normal Summon. This deck is just gaining Normal Summon after Normal yeah. Summon after Normal Summon. <laughs> It almost, it almost feels like Fluanda Reese and Blackwing are True. really <laughs> both birds. Why I mean, do they are. Wing Beasts always get extra normal what summons? Is it with I those want extra, extra normal, normal summons as well. Yeah, <laughs> why don't they give us. We, we do some pretty good birds imitations, so I, I think we should get extra normal summons for our next tournament as well. Exactly. So, yeah, he's now even ba Batuhan is reading on his own Blackwing cards. Shamal stays banished, though. And Sudri is coming back to hand. And we're summoning the Vata back to the field. And as far as I'm aware, Vata is not once per turn, right? Or is he? I am... Let's double check on that for sure. Not sure. I think this one has a hard once per turn clause on it. Yes, it has. It has. I just read it up. Yep, yep, yep. However, Vata this is, is still a level 2 tuner. Yeah, you can just so, go the regular yeah. way about it. You're right, you're right. You I mean, just... it's kind of boring to go for the regular yes. route, but I mean, it's a, a little bit more stylish as well. On the other hand... Oh, we get the Twin Shadow. This is such a good card. He, he might as well now, this time, get into his Rusty Badish Link place. Yep. Maybe we get to perform the Kali Yuga play this time. So even though he was again stopped twice by Matthew, he might have a chance here. Oh, we are going for a level six Synchro Summon. Or a Link 2 Summon, who knows? But it looks more like a Synchro Summon to me. Yep, Borea Storm. We're seeing Blackwing Borea Storm, the Wicked, the wicked wind, wind There he is. <laughs> and this one sends another Shamal. I think Shamal doesn't really do anything. Oh, we oh, are going. But we're climbing. We're climbing. So Wicked Wind is a tuner. So are we going for the... Oh, yes. Really big... oh, oh, yes. We have got to love to see it. The cover monster from Darkwing Blast being summoned here. The Blackwing Soul Dragon. There we go, guys. As if we would have scripted that, right? Just ask him, yeah, please summon the Starlight Rare from the set and now also the cover monster. Good effort, but, Batuan. Thank you. But I mean, but I mean, this is not the way you want to summon this out because you can actually summon this out by banishing a tuner and Black Winged Dragon from the GY. Oh, yeah. And that Black Winged <laughs> oh. Dragon never hit the graveyard, so... No. It was just rather the hard way and not the great way to summon this card. And look, we're in end phase again. We see that he's adding the Druid Swarm off of the effect of Magna Mood. And Druid Swarm is actually an easy out to this because the effect of Blackwing to Salt Dragon is that it collects Black Feather counters every time your opponent activates a monster effect. And as soon as you have four, you can tribute the monster and destroy all cards on the field. However, if you have Druid Swarm already, I mean, you know the drill. You guys have seen Druid Swarm already. You summon it once and then you go into a link play and with one counter, the Assault dragon will just get sent to the graveyard absolutely absolutely that doesn't look too favorable for batuhan but let's see what matthew can do out of this is it even what level is shamal is what i'm wondering right now is shamal even level two shamal is, okay no shamal is level four that's good that's good so i would have thought maybe he could even just special summon something with dark from the graveyard then and instant, instantly have access again okay there's merly now We're building a chain by the looks of it. Oh, oh, and look at that. That is now this time even coming in for the handy effect of being somewhat of an effect veiler. It's Shinook the Snowblast. When you have a Synchro Monster on board, 
you can actually just, oh wow, you can negate one once on the opponent's side of the field. But we talk wow. about the Super Bowl immunizations coming in for Matthew, and that and does not only dodge the shine nuke, but it also gets rid of the Blackwing Assault Dragon. This is so strong. I mean, we have talked about Super Polymerization coming in here to possibly out a Phantom Knight's rank up spell, but this one is way worse. Yep, and now the card has hit the graveyard, and Matthew is going to resolve the Murley, and he already has the Mud Dragon on board as well. I think he's explaining the situation that he's going to dodge the effect negation of Shinook here, which is absolutely true because it's yep. not on the field anymore. Or may maybe Shinook just works different than Bayonet. No, 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 no. It doesn't the work. The targeted monster loses 700 attack. Also, it negates the effects. So. And the I mean, it, it cannot lose the attack when it's no. not on the field anymore. So, but it looks like the judges have ruled it in the way that he cannot mill because. But the card can't resolve because there's no target anymore. I thought. I would be thinking the same than you, but... Is that not how Yu-Gi-Oh! works? Sometimes you, you gotta question yourself, Leonard. <laughs> I do, right now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Matthew is questioning the effects of all the Black Wings in the graveyard of Batu and currently just reading up on them. And look, we were right, Leonard. We don't have to question no. our life. We don't have to I question was, all the decisions. I was actually uh, searching for Vela <laughs> here <laughs> to read up what I was missing on. Yeah, but the Murley has resolved, the Super Poly helped in dodging that Shy Nuke effect, and he milled for, that can be only one. He brought in, that can be only one going second. That is usually an option you would side in versus Fluanderese, but once again, those decks are kind of similar at the end of the day, because it's also a lot it's, of wing it's beasts. wing beasts all along. Oh, but there is a bestial in the hand of Batuan, stopping the effect of Murley from resolving. Oh, and we have seen that this Murley is kind of important to Matthew, right? Absolutely. Because he, he actually protected the mill effect by using Super Poly. He did not hear, hit another name. And this could be the end of the turn. I mean, he has some plays, and he has many plays, to be honest. But the, the most important thing is that it was the Murley that triggered here. Because now he can't go into dark sprint plays. That's true. One line I see very clearly, though, is that he could just go into Redoer and then uh, Redoer detaches Vikel back and then you get instant nope. mill 5. Oh, why has not? has to go from field uh, hand or deck. You're r so right about that. True. That works with all the Tielemans monsters, but not with the Kel yeah, back. You're totally right. Now we are going to see Beatrice or Wallow. It's Beatrice. It is Beatrice. And that then works <laughs> because <laughs> this, this will actually yeah. bring you one Tielemans monster from the deck to the graveyard. or. He might as well go for another Kelbeck and just uh, take the gamble and mill five. Could also be very reasonable. Wouldn't do that. Probably Can't. not. It's, it's just safer to just instantly yeah. go for a Tielemans name. It is just because most certainly safer. As soon as you get into your first name, that resolves. You get the Kid Colors and get the second name as well. So there's really nothing you want to hit at this point. You also search for Scream already. Yep. Now we're sending Shiren, and Shiren is going to activate. Are we going to see a DD Crow? I know it's not as good as the Bestial cards, but still, it's still a Winged Beast that is dark. Cool. You can Icarus attack it. The thing is, what I'm seeing right now, he might just spin away the Magna Mood with Kaleido Heart. And I think I see game again on board. So oh, this I might be a pretty well. quick affair here by taking this 2-0. He's searching for the Rhino Heart, decisively adding it to his hand. I think he already had Rhino Heart in his graveyard, so he would have access to the Kaleido Heart already. But, oh, that looked like it would be announcing battle phase. Oh, no, he had to shuffle it back. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. So, did he Norman summon? Oh, yeah, he Norman summoned the Murley, so... But he could special summon it out with the effect of Kid yeah. Colors, of course. So He uh, discarded the first Rhino Heart with Super Polymerization. That's why it was in the GY, and then he had to shuffle it back. Indeed. So, Batuhan thinking maybe here for a quick second. Maybe something like Nibiru coming in here. Nibiru yeah. would actually be uh, kind of clutch here. On the other hand, you would give your opponent a mill tad in that scenario because then Kalbeck yeah. would trigger and Kid Colors would trigger as well. So Kalbeck still doesn't trigger. You're right. 
I don't think I'm going to get that until no, the end of the it's, event. No, it's okay. It's okay. I will correct you every single time. It's fine. But Very where do you get that you. Nibiru from? I mean, you have the deck list open here. Yeah, there is no Nibiru, but in theory, you know. In, th in theory, Nibiru is a good card sometimes, but not all the time. You're right, you're right. So, let's see. Batuan really wants to not rush this decision because it looks like he has an interaction here. It but just depends on which one what could it, it is. Be? Can Gale the Whirlwind save him? Oh, oh, he has the Twin Shadow. We knew about that already. So now he can Synchro Summon. And which card is it that he can summon out here? Can he go for the full Armor Master again? And does it even help him? Honestly, I don't think it would because he could just go for the same line that he did last time. He could just go for Dweller, yeah, he could just go for Rukalos. <laughs> it would be just the same as in game number one. So I'm really curious to see what Batuan is bringing up here. Is it something else? Is it something that this could really like help him here? Level 8 crow. Level 8, maybe it is. Can he summon Stardust Dragon with this? He's not running it, I'm afraid. I was thinking. But it is one that we haven't seen yet. It is Blackwing Silver Web. I've never seen this card being summoned with effect. Honestly, me neither. Only there a value is. target. This card is Synchro Summon. You get two. Uh, uh, this card pops two cards on Summon. <laughs> All right, all right. This card pops to when this card is synchro summoned, you can target up to two face up monsters on the field with defense lower than this card's attack. Destroy those targets. You cannot conduct your battle phase the turn. You activate this effect. You don't want to. It's your opponent's <laughs> turn. During each of your opponent's turns, the first Blackwing monster you control that would be destroyed by battle is not destroyed. This is actually really That's solid. That's kind of nice. So he is actually getting rid of the Rule Colors. Oh uh, no, the Kid Colors. But now, I mean, it's kind of nice because that lets him not special summon out. Yeah the Rhino Heart from his hand, because the effect cannot be used anymore, but it will still give him the mill 5 from the Kid Kalos here. Oh, and we're special summoning out Vinofung as well. I think that must be because of the Black Feather Wild Wind, right? Oh, yes, exactly. And we're again reading the Silver Wind. Is oh, Beatrice Silverwind. loses 800 attack points. This is really huge. By the way, if Matthew knew that Silverwind does this, <laughs> he could have chained Mudrig and called Dark. And then, oh no, it doesn't even target. Yep, that's even cooler. Oh, but so now he mills Kalbeck. we Kelbeck. saw that he mills Kalbeck here. We see that he also milled the Rhino Heart. Looks like he doesn't want to mill with Kalbeck, because he already has all the names in yeah. circulation, so... It would be a little bit of a waste, but you could have milled Shuffler, so yeah, that Dora doesn't seem too bad. Kaldu. Yep. Dora the Sword Oracle and Kaldu the Sacred Protector? I would just say you're right. Yes, you are right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So, we are going to resolve the effect of Shiren. So, what's next? Do we go for Kaleido Heart first, or do we go for Rule Colors first? Looks like a Lino Heart one. to me. <laughs> when yeah. he's putting down the Rhino Heart, it usually will end up being uh, Kaleido Heart because yeah. you can only summon that. And button, I think basically. he really wants to get rid of the Silver Wind, the Ascendant, because this one protects the Black Ring Monster from being destroyed by Badland. It is really relevant in this scenario. Also, keep in mind Beatrice lost 800 attack points due to Nothang. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Basic math, basic Yu Gi Oh here. Very old school deck, but it's very much a new deck. Let's see. This is now not game on board anymore, though, for Matthew, I'm afraid. I mean, he can't even out... At, at this scenario, he can't even out both monsters. Because the Beatrice lost the attack points. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But he could go for a rank 4 play still here. But he's going to out the Magna Mood. Interesting decision to out the Magna Mood over... Over the Blackwing the Monster. Blackwing Monster, <laughs> yeah. Because you would think... But your opponent can do more with an engine monster than yeah. with just a random dragon being on the board there. That is true. But let's not forget that random da dragon, that bestial magna He attacked into it. Oh. It lost attack points. The Beatrice crashed. The Beatrice was destroyed by battle. No big Dante as well. I mean, there would be one, but... Maybe he wanted that, though, because now an XYZ monster is battled. He could go into a rank 4 oh, yeah, in main phase 2, Zeus. and that enables him a Zeus line. Fair. And he goes for that very quickly, so I'm pretty sure that's actually going to be the play here. There's Baguska, and yep, there's also Zeus. And that, I think, Batuhan has no cards in hand. He will be able to search for one Bestial or for one Dragon oh, Monster in the end phase. he activates the Zeus, and this one I find quite interesting. 
okay, now you can trigger the Kaleido Heart and then send a card, which would probably be Scream to send out a trap. Okay, well, fair enough. Indeed, I think that's kind of nice. But he, didn't he? No, oh, he, he goes for Harness. Harness. So he has one more Fusion Summon open. I don't know if he still has Kit Galas in the GY. No, oh. he, he just passed, so I don't understand why he didn't do it in the next turn, so he can actually trigger his own Kaleido Heart with Zeus. That I mean, is he, he very did, odd. That is very odd to me. He could have just done it in standby phase. It would have been the same thing. He, he, he went from a board wipe with a shuffle plus... Okay, the shuffle doesn't really I mean, do anything, he, he, you know? I'm pretty sure why he did that. He wanted the set card, and he would have had to sacrifice the set card. Up, set card but how much better is a set card than a board wipe plus another fusion? You're probably right. I'm on your team there. Thanks. So, Batuan already wants to draw for turn, but I'm pretty sure the effect of Magna Mood on Fiat was announced, so he should absolutely grab a bestial monster first of oh, all. Oh, yes. And then go for his turn afterwards. Go get that Druze Worm. And I mean, that Druze Worm might honestly even help. Yeah. It could already be the first step to out the board. You could just summon it in defense position, and when your opponent then runs over it, you can get the other monster off of the board, so... Maybe Batuan can come back here. You know what? I would have just liked to see a Dweller because this graveyard of Batuan is filled with Black Wings that are just waiting to activate their effects if there even are some that he can activate. Just because when we were looking at the cards before the match, I think there were some pretty powerful GY effects. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one thing we know is Sephiroth is one of the ones you can... One of only the rare use. effects you can no. only use once per duel, and he already used Sephiroth, so we're definitely not going to see Sephiroth at all. But maybe one of the others, potentially. So there's a little bit of a judge call going on, no problem. People, uh, players just confirming on some ruling, which is absolutely standard. Um, and now we can discuss some deep Blackwing strategy. Oh, please. <laughs> what was your favorite Blackwing back in the day? I mean... Kalut was the nastiest one to use <laughs> on your opponent. <laughs> Vayu was the coolest one because it is a ninja chicken. And Shura felt like the strongest one because of the 1800 attack and your opponent never wanted to attack into true, it true. because if you get colluded, you go plus... Okay, plus one, but <laughs> still wow, a lot. Wow, yeah, let's go. That was a lot back in the day. To me personally, mm -hmm. the coolest was Bora always. I like Bora. I absolutely love Bora because the piercing damage really came up and it actually helped special summoning, you know? Uh, what am I talking about? It actually helps sealing the deal because back yeah. in the day, Blackwing really was the OTK deck of all, yeah. of, of all of them. When those were first released, we saw so many really swings for game in one turn. It was like the usual scenario. I remember back in the day with a young friend of mine, it was one of our first bigger event. We're traveling to a different city to it. I brought myself my Gladiator deck, as I was a Gladiator enjoyer. And my friend was bringing a Blackwing strategy. Please uh -huh. don't laugh, because no, it is I'm a true story. <laughs> I'm laughing with and you. <laughs> <laughs> and you will hear a very nice happy end okay, at the end. Okay, let's go. Because I think it was like 300 players or something. I scrapped, of course. <laughs> I didn't do very well in tournament. But my friend, he brought Blackwings. We were like 13, 14 years old never played a big tournament, and he made top 16 with Black Wings. Wow. And he OTK'd one guy after another, yeah. like all, all the older guys, and he was just like, yeah, that's game, I think. And so he was the talk of the town in that night or in that One day. of the reasons why Bora was so great and so important was that Dandelion was a card, <laughs> and people were always summoning 0-0 zero, zero tokens true, in defense. True. And you had Zirocco, who can boost the attack yes, of your Black Wings. That's true. That happened. To, I forgot also about that. one monster, and then you can actually go for like 8,000 damage with one attack over a Dandelion token. Absolutely. Absolutely. Also, one very crucial card back in the day, and you always needed a level 4 and Gale for that, was one very cool level 7 synchro. Do you remember one level 7 synchro that always ended the game back in the day? Dark Strike Fighter. Dark Strike Fighter it is. This card was a rather in between, so it's not as strong anymore today. But yeah. back in the day, you could just tribute all the monsters after doing some piercing yeah. damage with your Boros and so on. And, and then, then the game would be over decay, instantly. Yeah. That was that is true. crazy that times. Was also Crimson Crisis card. However, Level 7 Synchro Monsters, what do we have in this game right now? Because as you guys have seen, the deck has changed a teeny tiny bit. A little bit, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, back in the day you had Armor Master, which was kind of a boss monster because it couldn't be destroyed by battle. Yep, now yep. we have the full Armor Master, which just ignores everything, <laughs> except for battle. 
Yeah, important. and we saw that in game one. Yeah. Battle worked quite well. Yeah, Dweller, good card, pushes everything. So, do we have any level 7 Synchros here? Because I don't think that we have seen any. Not really. Let me double check on this extra deck. There would be Raikiki, but Raikiki, Raikiki is a level 8, oh, right? Okay, Although, cool. may, wait, for... I think Raikiki actually is a level seven. Don't respect, yeah. don't disrespect my boy Raikiki like that. You did not know this card existed. That's true, but I saw it on the deck list <laughs> right there, right now. <laughs> if this card so. is synchro summoned using a Blackwing monster as material, I'm just going to read this out. <laughs> it is treated as a tuner monster while face up on the field. Once per turn, you can target cards your opponent controls up to the number of other Blackwing monsters you control, destroy them. So I will have to read that again for myself cool. because I did not realize what I was reading. Yeah, but I mean, the sole fact that he hasn't summoned it yet is making it pretty yeah. obvious to me that he's not going to summon it very often in general, I right? Mean, it makes sense that he hasn't summoned it yet because it is a card that destroys opponent's monsters. It does not do it on summon, so yeah. it is a so-called ignition effect mm -hmm. that you will have to activate on your own. Yeah. So you don't do this on your first turn when your opponent has few monsters, true, true. which weren't even that few in Matthew's case. And you can't use Twin Shadow to summon it and then pop your opponent's field because you can't activate it as it's not a quick effect. To be fair... Which would be really strong, by the way. Yeah, to be fair, even though we already are in timeout, we already have like 40 minutes or something passed, <laughs> good old Batuan hasn't even seen his turns, turn two in this match ever. No, In that's game true. one, he played out a very long turn one, and then his opponent, Matthew, just ran him one. over still. And then in the second game right now, he again comboed for quite a while, but not that long. But his opponent took some time then to build up his board again. Yeah. But he finished. He didn't finish the game this time. And it would now, for the first time, be the case that he gets his second turn. But, but before going he to gets to the draw first. phase, we are going to have an investigation because Batuhan does not get to play his second turn in this tournament anymore. <laughs> yeah, somebody <laughs> appeared on Batuhan getting the second <laughs> turn. And this, this is probably what happened. <laughs> that cannot be. Blackwing players, they have additional normal summons, <laughs> so they cannot have a second turn. That's impossible. How is that going? Okay, Basti. <laughs> yes, please. Important question. Oh, you only have important questions. Which to me. deck would be better right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it okay, had I'm a listening. Normal summon. Yes. <laughs> Except for all of them. Okay. Um. Yeah, all of them, right? Okay, I, I said except for all of them. Then none of them. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, right? <laughs> no, but I mean, it's really cool. Like, let's really imagine. What kind of deck you could push with another normal summon? Because normal summon is not really the summoning technique that is super popular at the moment, besides <laughs> for Flander. I mean, you, you I gave mean, me an I obvious like answer. I my normal summon, and I use Rhino Heart, I use the Mali. <laughs> but do you, really, okay. do you really need another normal summon? I mean, I need the first one, it's yes. still popular. <laughs> yes, the first one is popular, but after that... I think there's not I mean, really I mean, any deck that uh, needs I mean, it. a second normal summon would basically be a free special summon, so it would... All right, okay. I all mean, right, this is, all right. I, I, actually, this is my bet. This was really a stupid question. <laughs> Thanks for at least realizing that. <laughs> it, was, it was really throwing but you on the bus. <laughs> let's get more into the tournament again. Yeah. They are still discussing, sure. but we were walking through the rows at the top tables yes. in the last round, in round number six now being in round number seven. And we saw some pretty interesting decks. We already spoiled you that there's quite a few Draco Slayer Pendulum decks actually performing well. We saw at least three to four or five being at the top 50 tables. So they are definitely doing well in the tournament. And you could definitely expect some of them to make top cut at some point. That would be really cool. And then on top of that, some other decks we haven't talked about the, yet. The players are packing together, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're right, you're right. I mean, we're going to, we're going to hear what happened in a, in a moment. So that's really cool. And um, as we are talking about other decks, why don't we look into the deck breakdown? Because I just heard we have a deck breakdown. So let's look at it and let's see what are the most popular decks at this YCS Dortmund. And you see the most popular deck indeed is Ishiza Telemans. But honestly, I am surprised by only seeing 28% yeah. there. It is the most popular deck disregarding the other category. But Basti, I know some pretty great players that are on this deck. I think the conversion rate is going to be much higher than 28% of Ishizu Tillemans in the top cut. I would agree. I would 100% yeah. agree. And look, Draco Slayer actually even made it into the breakdown. That shows us that there are quite a few Draco Slayer players. Because out of 2,500 players, 2% is quite impressive. 
Oh yeah, I, I see your 50? face. You're doing math right now. 50? <laughs> Is it 50? It, it should be 50, but I don't. My math isn't as good, so I'm here to commentate Yu-Gi-Oh, not to not to do math. <laughs> so let's Life look at the other also decks, though. Always difficult with us. Interesting decision of the three percent of players just running with pure T elements. I honestly think the Ishizu engine works so well together with the T elements archetype that I wouldn't want to miss it. And uh, the, on the other hand, I honestly would have expected more people to be on Fluanda Rees than on Sprite. Because to me, yeah. Fluanda Rees seems like the best answer to Ishizu T elements. It seems like it could be the best contender. But still, 14% of the field have to such run Sprite. And I mean, we saw a couple of lists. They are coming up with uh, I mean, interesting yeah. solutions for Sprite the matchup. Sprite is kind of a fan favorite at the moment since it came out. This deck is really popular. Uh, and we have seen great players on Sprite. We will have them in the featured match, I can tell you that. Absolutely. I'm really sure about that. And it looks like we are going into a game three. <laughs> this is interesting because players just shuffled up. That must mean that we had Batuhan, our Blackwing winner, all of a sudden we winning a this game. Blackwing wins a game. Bringing us a game number three. So let's go back over to the table. Let's see what game number three of this round seven feature brings us. There we have them, looking as confused as we are. And the score is equal now. It is one for Batuan and one for Matthew. I think we got a little bit of extra time, having yeah. us a little over five minutes now left on the clock. And we're going into a game free here between Matthew and Batuhan. And it is really good for Matthew that Batuhan does not start with a long combo because Nothang burns for 800 life points and yes. this could be a factor. Oh, wow. Activate Scream. Chainlink 1 is the Rhino Heart. Chainlink 2 is the Scream. We're hitting a Rhino Heart and a Huffness. Not too bad of a start. Oh, it's, it's really good, I would say. Absolutely. He hit a name. He gets to dump another name with the Rhino Heart he just summoned. And now we are going to see a targeted mill from the Reinhardt. Yep, and then in a new chain, most likely what's going to happen is... It wait, is another he, Hardness. Mill is another Hardness. Why is he doing he that? He probably does not want to put them all in the same chain while having so few resources in the GY already. So I guess he just wants to keep another one in the GY. I guess that's um, the case. So we are resolving Reinhardt and Hardness. Hardness just uses both of the Hafnesses, yeah. and I mean, this way you secure that you're not going to mill the Hafness later on in the turn because you have two Hafnesses at the bottom of the deck, so it's kind of nice True. because you prevent yourself from milling a name you already have used in the searching. turn. So yeah, your deck is already shuffled again. <laughs> yeah, what can you do? <laughs> nice try. Sometimes it is, it, it'd be like that. <laughs> Look, and we are searching for the Murley and the Shiren. That's kind of nice to instantly search for another Tielemans name when you're searching for Shiren because cool, it instantly... Deck gives you a discard, yep. Anyways, Sharon effect. <laughs> okay, he brings down the Merly now, so that is a classic case of mill 8, and he mills the crime. But I think he mills a bunch of cards oh, that could bring the crime back into yeah, the deck. That is true, Kalbeck as well. Kalbeck can be triggered. We also have Mudora. We don't see Kaldo in the GY just yet. But... Oh, I think he hit Shiren, right? Yeah, he did hit the Shiren. And he's going to activate Kalbeck as well. So maybe there are some cards in Batuhan's deck that will help him win this game in his not first turn. So we are resolving the Kalbeck. We see that there was an impermanence by Batuhan. Not in his hand, but rather got milled by the effect of Kalbeck. So it doesn't help him right here, right now. I think if he would have had impermanence opening hand, he would have either used it on the Rhino Heart or on the Kid Colors, I'm pretty sure. So World Colors is being summoned here, and I mean, do you think that he is going to... Does he have a scatter shot in his side deck? Let me just quickly check that. Yes, there is Volcanic sh scatter shot. In oh, it is in hand! So. It is in the hand! And I he mean, can you can just, just discard, discard it with Shiren, right? That, that should totally work. So, yep, we are discarding Volcanic Scatter Short for the effect of Tielemans Shiren. That means we're going to burn for 500. But first of all, we're going to resolve the rest of the effect of Shiren. Milling three cards, having Mudora and Heartbeat, Heartbeat being milled. Heartbeat actually re-adding the Tielemans Crime. 
pretty strong. That or is really strong. I mean, you don't really get to have another monster in hand now, and you can't add one. I think you've resolved all the effects. So at this point, you actually just... And, and now this Sully. should be the elf. Yep, there it is. And you can see it on the screen as well now. Matthew is ahead in life points, and now he's also ahead in summoning rank fours again in this game because of Time Thief Redoer is hitting the field. Another set card, and one and a half minutes right around that for Batuha now to maybe get those life points back, maybe get ahead again. Honestly, if Batuhan gets to his main phase, there yeah. are a couple of ways for him. Yeah. And he, he has drawn for turn here. He, there comes a redo in standby phase, but he's in main phase after that. Oh, and Vata is being added to the redoer. Vata is actually a really good GY effect for him, no? That is not really the card that Matthew wanted to hit. He already has monsters underneath his time fee redoer, so a trap or a spell card would have definitely been better. But let's see what Batuan can do here. As we just said, he is in his main phase, so there are a couple of a couple of effects in his deck that could inflict burn damage. For example, the Notome we were just mentioning a couple of times. He starts it all off with the Black Feather Whirlwind, though. And what's happening after? Looks like he may be using the effect here. Oh no, he's going to normal summon Sudri. Let me get Sudri up for you guys again, so you don't forget Sudri the Phantom Glimmer. And Sully oh. is immediately activated. Merly is there on the field. Merly can be tributed, and Merly can easily make another powerful fusion blade. But Leo, what do you think about that? Honestly, I think that Salik is quite preemptive, because yeah. we've seen there are burn effects in the extra deck of Batuhan, so yeah. I would have honestly just waited until he summons out the Notum to just yeah. prevent Batuhan from getting damage in. And now we see timeout has been announced, so now it is on Batuhan to actually change the current status of life points, and that is Right now, Matthew being up 500 life points because of the effect of Volcanic Scatter Shot. But as we saw, Batuan has a couple of options to actually burn his opponent here. Exactly. So, Sudri, is it going to be sent to the deck with World Colors or is it the Black Feathered Warwind? No, the Sudri is going into the deck. It's not un it's, it's not under the deck, it's in the deck, but uh, I think I mean, we will... for the moment it doesn't really search. matter. Okay, we are so, shuffling, well, no. let's... Let's keep it the correct way. Absolutely correct. So, Batuhan, you've shown us a lot of very cool Blackwing monsters, yeah. and I'm already thankful for remembering us of all of them, but do oh. you have it oh, in no. you? Oh, that oh, no. is tough. He's using the prosperity, so that means every burn damage he's trying to do is going to be halved for the rest of the turn. We're not going to see any battle damage because he will not be able to leave his main phase one as timeout was just announced. But is there any way? This cuts Nothung's damage to 400, so it wouldn't even win through the scattershot effect of Matthew. This is absolutely insane, but I mean, maybe he has other effects that help him. Maybe he can activate Nothung twice. Can That's he recycle it? That's what I was just it? looking up. And... Nope, you can only use this effect of Notung once per turn. It's a hard once per turn. No way Notung is going to resolve twice. And he takes the Psy Moon. There must be a way. When Batuhan is playing on right here, there must be a way for him yeah. to actually deal more damage. I'm very hopeful for him. I Maybe he, he just up... wants to show us his cool combo as well. <laughs> it, it looks like he picked up Dimension Shifter for turn. Oh no, that was no, his no, deck, it... but there was Dimension Shifter in there. He just went for the Psy Moon. Okay, Simon, of course, activating the effect. Or is he going to use Shamal first? Oh yeah, he's using the Simon, banishing the Shamal. And then normal summoning the Simon, of course. But no. first of all, of course, we're going to activate the Black Whirlwind. So maybe Batuhan just wants to show off. Maybe he just wants to once again show us all the cool Blackwing cards he brought here to YC's Dortmund. And let me get the OG one of the best permanent spells that we have ever had in this game up for you guys. Look at this absolute beauty, Black Whirlwind. Indeed. So now he's triggering the Scream, and Scream hits him a halfness. It hits him double halfness, actually. I D 
doesn't I look like he already he... used toughness, right? Yeah. Now he tributes Merlin. Now he can just also resolve Whirlwind first. He will use Halfness in the chain after that. Honestly, I can't lie, a Perlerino would be helpful here for Matthew. Indeed, it would be. So is there a way for Batuhan? Because we still haven't figured out any other way besides Nofung to deal damage. But he needs another way, as we were just saying. Nofung would, in combination with that Proud of Prosperity, only be 400 points of damage, which would be 100 life points short due to Volcanic shot, Scattershot burning him for 500 the turn earlier. Where does Dark Dragoon would be a cool way if it could actually pop opponent's monster and yeah. uh, inflict damage. Oh, that is true as well. But it does not have that effect because there are no normal monsters. No Dark Magician, no what Red Eyes in the graveyard. What about the Red cards that I'm looking at in the extra deck? I don't think they're going to make it. I don't think they're burning. No. So, we are searching. We are still searching, and Matthew wants to take his time to actually perform a summon now. He did use the Hafnis going into Kid Kalos here. Kid Kalos now also using the effect. And Batuhan is like, yep, sure, go ahead. I mean, what kind of card is he even summoning into here? Oh, he's searching for Hafnis, okay. He's searching for Hafnis because there would be no other fusion. Okay, you couldn't summon Garua. Congratulations, you summoned Garua yeah. on your opponent's turn. But that probably isn't really helping you in any way. So, we see he has Vata. He has Twin Shadow in hand as well. But first of all, he's going to special out the Vata. And honestly, Vata might become my new favorite Blackwing. I really like Vata. It's really honest. cool, right? I like the jacket. Yep. It, it really looks like Jack Atlas. Oh, bit. and we are going to see the OG Blackwing yes. Gale the Wild One. Thank you, Bartuan, for completing every single Blackwing card in your deck. You showed us every single one of it on the field. And now we're going to see the Redoer from Matthew. So now that we have Vata and Gale, I think that he really wants to get probably rid of the Gale because halving the attack points without having battle phase is threatening. Indeed it is. So, okay, yeah, of course, there's yeah. still Dracostopalia left, sure. I was talking about Garura, but Dracostopalia actually is quite good because it is another yeah. negate. There comes the effect of Vata now. Yes, and Vata might actually be answered with the Dragostopelia effect. Vata, oh wait, Black-Winged Dragon probably has some kind of effect, right? <laughs> I mean... Oh I mean, yes, some... Black-Winged Dragon it is! I just saw the last sentence. And if it does inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack lost by this effect. So Black-Winged Dragon might be the option wow. to actually burn some life points here in this match. So is he getting to it though? Is he getting to his Black-Winged Dragon? That's the real question here. So what, has I, I just ex was so excited about the last sentence, but what does he have to do to actually, <laughs> to actually <laughs> inflict damage? Remove black feathered counters that you get from taking damage, which you don't take then. It, it soaks it up. Yeah, 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 I see, I see. Then uh, you reduce the attack of a monster on the opponent's side for 700 for each counter. Yep, and yep. then you deal 700 damage. So. He would just basically need for, two counters. Yeah, for, exactly. He needs two counters and the Black Winged Dragon on field. And he also has to find a way to actually play through the Rule Colors, play through the Dracostapalia. Those are still there on the field. And I don't know if there is a way. I mean, he can go for the level 7 Synchro Monster, your boy, which was named... Rakiki. Rakiki. <laughs> so let's see whether he can go for that, though. The Rain Shower, by the way. Who would have thought? But yeah, he is now considering. You can just go into a black wing drink now, but does that really help you at this point already? He's first of all going to use the effect of Vata. Yes, so this Vata is what should I want to absolutely see. bait out one of the negates here from Matthew. Or you just wait until the black wing dragon hits the field. But maybe there is a way to like book it to dodge the targeting effect. That would be so cool. I mean. I'm kind of biased here. I love Black Wings. Yeah, and of that's, course. That's why I really <laughs> want to see Batuhan actually pulling this off here. And of course, it is always David versus Goliath. We have Ishiza Tielemans versus Blackwing here. Of course. I think it's pretty obvious to the viewers at home who so, they are rooting yeah. for as well. So there is a Predator counter on the Vata. And now we are going for a level 8 Synchro Summon. This could 
be the Black Winged Dragon, the boss monster of the Black Wing deck. He's and searching for he it. Is oh, but oh. no, we're going Wait. to see the warrior of the uh, Black Wing, the actually, tamer. the Black Wing Tamer, Obsidian Hawk Joe, first of all. Oh, we're going for a rank uh, level 7. Oh, because Simoon was. Level 5. Okay, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I was thinking he can go into it with Gale. Yeah, yeah, but he no. left the uh, Gale on board. Now comes the Mudora onto the Vata. So Vata is actually getting shuffled back into the deck. But you would probably just shuffle back more cards with <laughs> the Mudora. Yeah, okay, he shuffles yeah. back Sca the Scatter, scatter shot. shot. He wants to mill it maybe again. So now there is another Vata in the GY. I honestly and think he maybe should have or quite early shuffled back the scatter shot. Just yeah. having that uh, chance yeah. to mill another one would have made it just harder for Batuan to deal enough damage here. But this is really coming down to it. Is the Blackwing Dragon hitting the field? Is he going to be able to summon it? Is he going to be but able he needs to resolve to get the some effect? counters on it too? Yes. Yes, you're right. I'm so curious whether he will be able to. Also, do it. there is still World Colors effect. But Simon, first of all, is coming back due to the effect of Black Feather Whirlwind. So, what's next? Oh no, and the handshake hand is next. <laughs> he hands the shake. So, that was a fantastic duel. We see a round of applause from our crowd and absolutely deservedly deserved. Batuhan put up a great show with his Black Wing deck. Nobody really would have seen that coming. It was super close and he was still in competition. Yeah. Until the last second of his match. He really was trying to fight to get into that Black Wing Dragon, but ultimately fell a little bit short, and therefore Matthew won this yeah. feature match. He yeah. could summon the Black Wing Dragon. He did not do it in the end, but he would not be able to get any counters onto it yes. so that he can burn his opponent for 700 life points. This pot of extravagance, uh, pot of prosperity, yep. really kind of hurt him because he could have gone for 800 damage with Nothung, but in the end he had to use it, right? He didn't have a play otherwise. Yeah. He needed it to get to all of those combo pieces he was actually getting then. Because, honestly, he was playing and playing and playing. And Blackwing seems really cool. Because we saw game one, where he played through Kelbeck, Bistial Magna Mood, and Halfness. With, with the middle of Modora. two yeah. shufflers. And he still produced an endboard, and he was still yeah. going on and on and on. The endboard was a monster that is unaffected by card effects, and this is not too bad. Not the craziest, though. And yeah. uh, then after that, you know, in game number two, he again fought Kaldek through fought so Mahmoud. much. Yeah, but he fought through yeah. so much again now in this yeah. last turn of the duel, and he almost got to his win option again. Yeah. So that was really, really impressive stuff from yeah. him there. That is true. And in game two, I think he would have really i mean that that was a gigantic board that he had to yeah. play through it was with uh, salik and roll claws and it then was tough. It summoning was tough. the rhino heart uh, kaleido heart and you know the drill guys you have seen she's a tailorman once absolutely twice. yeah but we were just uh right before we were getting back into the game talking about the other cool decks that are actually rocking at the top yeah. table still one deck i wanted to bring up because it's also one of my favorite decks even my favorite deck there are a couple of Sky Striker players actually sitting at the top table still, so we might get this into the featured match as well and again. I'm really impressed by that because yeah. with Biss Heals around... Seems weird, right? Your race get banished and you want your race. Indeed you do, but maybe you're just going for one turn kills now a lot more yeah. often because that release of Linkage, linkage Sky Striker yeah. Mobilized Linkage, really helps you because the Striker deck now shifts from being a deck but literally never OTKs when not having access to access code talker to a deck that can just quite easily yeah. go for game every single time because of the existence of linkage. That is true. Because that provides you quite a bit of damage potential. So I think it is actually not even that important to have that big of a grind game nowadays anymore. So you can just focus on actually going for game quite fast. And that's just another way to play the deck now. But it seems to be a working way yeah. because there are a couple of successful players still in. I would like to see it work without Mystic Mind, to be honest. I mean, the card is still a really, really strong card and it's still a sure. popular choice in sure. the deck. Of but course. in the latest events, it has felt like the deck did not really do anything with the own engine. I mean, yeah. I mean, speaking about Mystic Mind, we of course have some Mystic Mind strategies at yeah. the top tables oh, as well. Oh, I think we have 1XO. It looked like there was somebody being 6-0 with like a pure Mystic Mind burn yeah. strategy. 
And then also, I think there was somebody uh, piloting a runic mine strategy that has yeah. become very popular with the oh, release of runic really cards strong. as well. There are other runic strategies that are focusing decks out yeah. with the Tierlemann uh, Ishizu cards with Kalbeck and Dagido. Totally. <laughs> and, and the um, runic cards you are yeah. deck outed in four turns. That could be really, really interesting to see as well. I'm very sure that we're going to see many more great featured matches over the course of the, e over the, course of the event. We have two more rounds to go today. We're not going to be in the casting booth for those. Yep. We're going to hand it over to our Italians and we're going into bed after this. <laughs> I mean, no, we're going to watch a couple yes, more we are games going to here walk in around the venue. The venue we just love Yu-Gi-Oh! so much at the end of the day. <laughs> but this is the end of our working day. So uh, I will hand you now over again to Ad Templar and our winner of the future match, Matthew Chan. So, Ad, take it away. Thank you very much, Basti. Yes, I am joined by Matthew Chen, the winner of round seven. So, first of all, congratulations. But let's let's talk about what happened there because there was a big stall and you had a game loss. Do you want to talk to us about it? It was to do with I wrote it down. It was activating Shireen twice. Was that what happened? Uh, off the um, off the Beatrice, I sent a Shireen, and then uh, later on, I kit milled a Rhino Heart, and I had a Shireen in hand, so I was like, uh, I won't use the Rhino Heart on field effect, and I haven't used it yet. But then I used the Shireen again, whereas I could have Reinhardt sent Havnus and it would have reached that game state still. But like, it was it was completely my fault. It's not the, it's not on the judges or anyone else but me. So it's what it is. Mistakes happen. There's a lot of pressure on those. And did you tell me before that that was your first ever feature? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> then yeah, there's quite a bit of pressure up there. So mistakes do happen, and you know. Either way, you've come out on top after all that. So let's sort of go through some of the things that were happening. There was quite a lot going on in game one. There was a huge first turn from Batan and stuff. You were giving a lot of the Bistial and Ishizu interactions there that were stopping things. There was the Cyberstein into Kit Kalos and things. Do you, did you have any other spicy options for the Cyberstein during that? Um, no, I'm not running exterior, but um, I, I think it's, it's like running a second copy of Instant Fusion. Like, it's not quite, but it's like almost that sort of analogy. So, And then there was the Dweller monster that got over the full armor master, and then you took game one. We obviously talked about game two. Things, things happened pretty well, like your Super Poly wiped the Assault Dragon, dodged the Chinook effect with the you know, Effect Veiler style. Then that's when the game state thing happened. And so then we went on to game three, you were going for scatter shot. you built your field, and then he was just sort of clinging to that final main phase. Were you worried at any point that he was going to get that burn damage off? So I know from what I've seen, I think no thung was the only burn damage that I could, that he could do. So I just had to make sure he couldn't get to level six. But even if like the time rules weren't a thing, I think my board was just uncrackable. Well, that and the, the prosperity caused a problem because that halved the damage anyway. So that was a real problem. It's take 400, yeah. yeah. So actually, for the longest time we were watching going, there's very little he could do. There's one of the Black Wings that does 700 damage. We were thinking, would that even do it? You'd have to crack 1,000 damage to be able to do it. So it was a long old stretch. He tried to see if he could do it. But in the end, Matthew, you took the win. Congratulations. Even through all the turmoil that went on in game two, you've come out on top. Two more rounds for you today. It's getting late. Do you feel confident? Do you feel good about these last two? Uh, it hopefully it doesn't go like that, that round. No kidding. Yeah. But hopefully it'll go well, yeah. Excellent. Well, best of luck with those. Congratulations again. Hope it all goes well. Guys, we have two more rounds coming up. We're just finishing up the last bits of extra time in the rest of these duels that are going on. But we'll be back with the final two feature matches of today here at YCS Dortmund. Don't go anywhere.